Loud enough? Okay. Sorry, I'm a little late. Had a conversation going on. Forgot what time it was. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and pray. Father, thank you. We love you. We need you. We praise you. Pray that you would help us to glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, well, you're fine. I was the one that was late. Okay, we are in 1 Peter chapter 4, and it talks about in the beginning part how we used to walk, and then in verse 4, I will begin verse 3. For we've spent enough of our past time, lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lewdness, lusts, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. For this reason the gospel is preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. That is an odd sounding passage. Any thoughts? I will confess this is one that sometimes is a mystery to me. What's he saying there? Well, that's one possibility. Yes? Hold on, I'm going to shut this door. Say in Ephesians 2, Paul talks about how we were dead in our trespasses and sins. Okay. And when you really think about it, the gospel isn't preached to those who are alive spiritually. Okay. The gospel is preached to give life spiritually. So all people who hear it must be dead in their sins first to be raised to life after. Okay, so you brought up one possibility of it being dead, dead, and there's the spiritually dead piece of it. Any other possibilities here? I got to say, I'm far more comfortable with what Matthew said, because the other part is like, odd. Oh, now, it, but however, it was mentioned in the previous chapter that Christ was proclaimed, was preached to those who were dead in the days, who had died in the flood in the days of Noah. So there was some proclamation, I think, that did take place in the spiritual realm, so it's not that that's not possible. In fact, this to be this being so close to the other verse, but we do know that before we came to Christ, we were dead. We do know that, and um, now it says here that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. Do men in the flesh judge us? But how do we live? We live according to the Spirit. They can judge us however much they want to, but we live according to the Spirit. Yes, Matthew. But even in those just few previous verses, mm -hmm. they think it's strange that we don't do the same things we used to do, and they speak evil of us because of that. Mm -hmm. so they're judging us. They're willing to do that, but they have to give an account for their actions as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other thoughts about this before we move on? Okay. Uh, the the I guess the, the main points to take away is there was some, uh, according to First Peter three, there was some proclamation of Christ as Lord that happened in the spiritual realms among the dead. Not that they could be saved, but but he was proclaiming himself, and uh, so perhaps it's referring back to that. But we know. We know that before we came to Christ, we were dead. And we know that people judge us that are outside Christ, that are the ones that are still dead, they judge us. 
they 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 call the good that we do evil. They call the e the evil that they do good, and uh, and they do judge us. And we also know that we live according to God and the Spirit, so we don't have to be um, burdened by their potential hatred toward us. And again, remember, he's talking to people to prepare them for to to endure persecution. Over and over again, that idea is being given to us. Verse 7, but the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have a fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now he begins this statement by saying, the end of all things is at hand. <clears throat> Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. The end of all things is at hand. This was written 2,000 years ago, and the thought was the end of all things is at hand. What are your thoughts about that? Yes? It's not the end of the world. It's the end of... Living your life the way that you have lived. Okay. The end of that. The end of that former life. The unknown life that didn't know about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? <laughs> the <coughs> attitudes and habits that he is promoting here are related to the end of all things being at hand, right? Okay. Now, how long has this earth been around? I know I'm asking an unanswerable question. Scientists or God? Right. <laughs> and even then it depends on which scientist you're talking to That's because right. some scientists yeah. would advocate for a young earth and some scientists would advocate for, for a really, really old earth. What about the end of all your things? It's right there. Are those at hand? Yes. How much longer you got on this planet? Don't know. Don't know. If I were to tell each one of you that you have another 50 years, would you believe me? No. <laughs> Several of you would not believe me. Okay. So for some of us, that end is coming, isn't it? Now, as far as the end of all things is at hand, let's say he was referring to the end of time. Where are we in relation to the end of all things if the end of all things was imminent 2,000 years ago? Where are we in relationship to the end of all things? Are we further away from it or closer to it? Okay. So if the end of all things was imminent, if, if that's what he's saying, and again, he, he may be saying what Rich was proposing, but if that's what he's saying, if the end of all things was imminent in the mind of God 2,000 years ago, is it not imminenter now? <laughs> or more imminent now? Matthew. Two other things to consider is that Peter, when he was opening up the church on Pentecost, talked about how we are in the latter days, or right. the last days. The last days. So it doesn't give a timeline for how long the last days are, but in relation to periods of history, 
we know there's no more covenant coming. We and know a, there's nothing after Christianity. There is the return of Jesus, and that is that's it. That's an excellent point. That is how Peter began his sermon on Pentecost, the prophet, prophecy from Joel in the last days. So if they were in the last days, we're further along in the last days. <coughs> Kathy? Does it really matter? Well, it, I think, I, I'll tell you why. Here's, I'll tell you why I think it matters. Okay. It matters because we're surrounded by people that are so obsessed with eschatological schemes and premillennial, postmillennial, amillennial, humillennial, that that they that we need to know where we are, as and we're in the last does days. It huh? As a Christian, does it matter? As Matthew said, nothing's coming after after Christ came, except the, when the trumpet blows. So. We're getting closer. We know we are. Well, I agree with everything you're saying there, except for the fact that it doesn't matter. I think it does matter. We're in the last days. We need to we need that's, to be truthful about that's that. That's a statement. It is in the last days. Does it yeah. matter whether that's two hundred years, two thousand years, two million years? No. And it's not impo and it's not possible to know actually. It's not. And yeah. if I die today, then I was in my last days. If I die twenty years from now, I've got twenty years of in my last days. That's right. There we go. Wesley. I'm going to, I mean, I, 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 I get what you're saying, but it, it is important for us to understand what is meant by the phrase last days because people who don't know are going to read it and be like, right. Peter didn't know what he was talking about then. Right. He thought the world was going to come to the end to tomorrow, so why are you even following this civic religion? Right. And it's not even what he means. It's so, not what he means. So we, right. we need to be able to know what that phrase means in order to in order to more appropriately handle those kind of discussions. Yeah. Yes. So they definitely had to be prepared because they were going through persecution. But what Peter says in Second Peter <laughs> chapter three, verses one through three, is that there will be scoffers in the last days who walk according to their own lusts. Right. So they're essentially going to deny that there is any judgment or that God is coming back, and they're going to try to lure people away from Christ by saying, well, he hasn't been here for you know 2,000 years. Everything's continuing on as it did, mm -hmm. so why are you bothering to change? Why are you giving up this lifestyle? Clearly, it's not true. And they had to be ready to face that, just like we have to be ready to face that, right. because we know we must change, or else we'll have to give account for those things. So, so I believe we're in the last days. Do we know how long the last days are going to last? And can we relax? I think we can. I think we can live with that, and we need to be now. Now. I see you. Oh, just one second. There are certain conduct that he calls us to engage in because time is short. And what does he say here? Be serious and watchful. So we need to pay attention. And above all things have... Well, what are the things he says? We just read it. What are the things he says? What are, what are the behavioral responses to this um, end of all things at hand to be? Fervent love. Fervent love. Hospitality. Hospitality. What else? Be obedient. Be obedient, yeah, yeah. Somebody <laughs> talked about that earlier it's today. Simple. It's, that's what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. Be obedient. What else? It just speaks so that the tribe is glorified. Mm -hmm. Use your gifts that he gave you. Lose the gifts he gave you. <laughs> Sound judgment and sober spirit. Uh huh. It says, "Keep fervent in your love for one another, because love covers a multitude." Yes. Of sins. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Anything else? Prayer. Prayer. Mm -hmm. There's one that's always skipped over. It begins with a G. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. Without grumbling. <laughs> we want to grumble, don't we? Okay. 
So, so these are the things that we're, these are the thing, these are the behaviors and attitudes and actions that we're to take on ourselves. And again, the reason he says it is because the end of all things is at hand. Okay. What, whatever that means, that's what we need to do in response. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Sign it because love covers a multitude of sins. Rich. But I don't think that we can go around and think, you know, he wants obedience. He wants us to be uh, in scripture with prayer and everything. But, you know, as he said, I've come, I will come as a thief in the night. Mm -hmm. It's when the time will come. And then the other part of it is, as bad as things are now, the same stuff was happening back in Rome. Okay? And how long did it take before God said enough with Sodom and Gomorrah? Okay? There was only one left. Walk. As long as there's a, a group of us, I feel that God still has the hope that, that right. this kingdom can, can continue. So I, I just... I, I, I always, I'm a half glass full guy, not a half empty. I, right. I just hate to think that you know people have in their mind that oh, the end is near, the end is near. And I, I, I really don't feel that. Now, I when you're thinking about the end, are you talking about the end of the world, or you sound like you're talking about, about yes. the end of business as usual? No, end of the world. End of the world. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I do hold great hope in the fact that there are many righteous people left on planet Earth. Yeah. I do hold out a lot of hope with that. Um, I don't know that he's gonna end things just because we have, because the church has left the building though. He may, he may cause it to come to an end for his own reasons in his own time and for his own purposes. I don't know that, I don't know that, um, You know what? I'm not going to get caught up into that because that's an awful lot of uh, awful lot of speculative thing. I was about to speculate, and I don't need to do that. Yes. He says he's coming to the thief of the night. He came at an unknown time. Right. He's going to come back at an unknown time. Right. Live your life the way it's supposed to be lived. There we go. And do you have a problem with whenever it ends? Right. Live, yeah. live. If we're if we're living for Jesus, <coughs> looking up. And, and that's, that's what we need to do now. So, and, and again, watchful, serious, fervent love, hospitable, don't grumble, use the gifts that God's given it to you as a good steward, speak as the oracles of God, you're not speaking your words, you're speaking God's words. And what's the best way to speak God's words? He's written them down, hasn't he? Okay, use you know the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. If anyone ministers, let him do with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Now let's back this away from this possibility of the last days and all that sort of stuff. Is that is that not how we should act at all times anyhow? Okay. Now, verse 12, beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, Blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part he is blasphemed, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this manner. So, Fiery trial. 
as though some strange thing has come upon you. Now, what's he talking about then? Are, were people then going through fiery trials? It sounds like it. And he says, don't think it is strange. Yes. Is the fiery trial the persecution? Because I, I, uh, I'm remembering the first time that I, I've always been able to, like when I get a job, I'm, I'm, you know, try to be likable and I've never really been somebody that had to deal with, um, you know, having my coworkers probably say, oh, here he comes, you know, the Christian or, or whatever. Yeah. And I always had a pretty good sense of humor and I've been able to. You've always gotten along with people. Yeah. And, um. I did find it super strange when uh, lately, and I guess within the past year, when I've been um, having starts, which starts out as conversations, because they know they want to test me, um, they know that I follow Christ and they want to test me and um, have like debates. So then having that anger, it's been a, a big surprise. I didn't know how difficult that was going to feel. Um, I'm finding joy, counting it joy now. Mm -hmm as much as I can, but it's still um, hard. So I, I wonder what that trial is speaking of. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I don't think he's talking specifically about fire, although there were fire, actual fire that came yeah, into the persecutions, persecution, yes. Works, right? But but this, I think that's poetic language is used there, although it was pointing at something that was yeah. gonna come in the times of Nero. He said, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. So what's he saying? Don't think it's strange. Don't think it's unusual. Expect it. Trials. And if he says fiery trials, if he's using that poetic, is that going to be a comfortable trial? Mm -hmm. And if it's actual, is that going to be a comfortable trial? discomfort is our lot. So when you walk into the job and they're looking at you differently because you believe in Jesus, it's coming, brother. And it's worse now, I feel. Um, there's, 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 it's um, glor like homosexuality is so much more glorified. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if they had the same amount of feelings back then and it's just now becoming accepted. That's why we're seeing it mm -hmm. or if it's just getting worse. But I, I was thinking... Lately, Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what I, I keep thinking when I think of what's happening here. But yeah. Um. Well, yeah. The, calling good evil and evil good. I mean, that's that's common, common culture. It's kind of odd. I go about through my day, and I'm not really faced with that kind of stuff. I go into the Dunkin' Donuts, get my coffee. I go to Panera, I get my coffee. I'm getting coffee everywhere. Uh, I, you know, and, and I see nice people and have nice conversations and it seems normal, but then you pick up the newspaper or you, y'all heard the newspapers, right? They were popular a while ago. <laughs> uh, or you get on the internet and you see reports of this and reports of that. And it's like, there's a campaign being foisted upon us to believe that down is up and up is down and that, and that evil is good and that good is evil and that Christians are the bane of existence. And that, is there something about truth being, um, in the Bible, I can't remember the verse, but it's where um, something along the lines of truth is no longer looked at as truth. Sure. Yeah. 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 They'll, believe the, they'll, they'll believe the lie and be damned because they refuse not to love the truth. But it took pleasure in wickedness. And that's very descriptive of the age that, that we're in in a lot of ways, okay? <clears throat> but but do, re, do look, you know, when you go out and about, Try to try to remember the normal conversations you're having pe with people because there's still a lot of normal conversations that are happening out there. Is it ugly? Yes. Is it dark? Yes. Is it getting darker? I think we could argue that it is, it is getting darker. However, you keep shining, and the ones that 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 puts you through a trial. It says here, do not think. It's strange. 
concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though something, some strange thing happened, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. So, here comes Mr. Christian. <laughs> Rejoice. Rejoice. Inside, you know, that, that's a badge of honor. It's a badge of honor. And it's hard because we all want to get along with people, right? We all want to be nice. I don't want to... <laughs> okay, not all of us. <laughs> a lot of us want to get along with people. And, you know, and so we think, well, we've done something wrong if it's not, well, no, you've done, you've done something right. We're being looked more and more, as this <clears throat> is celebrated more, I feel like we're just being looked more and more as um, just horrible people, mm -hmm. you know, it's just. I would say there's a PR campaign to try to get that to happen, yes. but, but you have a vote in this too. I by your conduct and by your attitude and by your response to these sorts of things, you can create cognitive dissonance in their minds. Oh, well, I thought he was supposed to be evil, but he's not. I'm telling you, I, I gave my button away to somebody. I had it when I, when I came to the building, but when I go out and I wear that, people notice it, and then I don't act like a jerk, and they don't know what to do with that. It's like I'm being nice and not in their face and obviously Christian, and it creates that, that cognitive dissonance I'm talking about. And then eventually, with, en with enough, enough context, an actual conversation can take place. Be yourself. Be your Christian self. Yes? It kind of reminds me of, we, we've all seen commercials that are, we just don't like them. But they come up, and we wish they would stop coming up. Mm -hmm. We don't want to watch them, but they have a little kitschy tune. <laughs> And so when we're minding our own business, who, that, that, that tune is there, even though we don't want it there, but it's there. Mm -hmm. And we're remembering, we're remembering this product that we didn't want to be advertised for. It, it's, it's the most annoying type of successful marketing. <laughs> okay. Are you saying, are you saying when you're obvious about your faith and, yeah, and are still kind and good and nice yeah. and yeah. People yeah, don't, don't it. hide it. Do not hide your faith and don't be a jerk about it. That's the plan. Be bold and kind at the same time. It'll freak them out. They won't know what to do with it because they're expecting you to be obnoxious. Well, I don't know if I can ever stop being obnoxious. But <laughs> they're expecting you to be judgmental and harsh. No, rejoice, be happy. Did you see who came this morning? Uh-huh. There we are. There we are. God is good, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was a hand, another hand. Whist, Rich, and then and then Jerry. Um, you know, and, and that's a classic example of uh, love your enemies. Yes. The Romans didn't know what to do with that. Correct. Yeah. They loved their enemies even as their enemies were killing them. They couldn't handle that. Okay. Yes, Jerry. I'm reminded of if you've ever watched any documentaries about what seal training is involved to become a Navy SEAL. Yeah. The instructors try to do everything, fair and unfair, to try and get these recruits who volunteer for that assignment to quit. Right. But there are some that no matter what happens, they they take whatever crap that they're given to become a seal. As Christians, the world's going to throw all kinds of stuff at us to try to, one, stop us from being Christian, stop us from being Christ-like, mm -hmm. to be more like them. Well, and then they got you. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. And, See, I told you. You're like that. And I kind of identify with, you know, I, that's what I'm thinking about when Peter says that no matter what fiery trials you go through, that God has not ever given us authority or license to be ugly, to be, mm -hmm. to respond in kind. We 
we're to be loving, we're to be light, we're to take it and just continue on to, to the ultimate goal. And not let the world dictate how we're going to respond, but allow love and, and Christ's example. And if you look at what he went through, yeah. all of his ministry on earth, particularly his passion and his crucifixion, uh, that we uh, that we like Christ need to uh, look toward the great glory that awaits us. Wow. I didn't hear the last 30 seconds because I was looking at that card and deciding whether I could sign and listen at the same time and I didn't need to do either one. I'm sorry. Jerry, you said we're to be light, but I don't see that in the Bible that we're to be light. Well, uh, light shine for all Lights. 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 Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. Lights. Okay. Light bulb. Yeah. Some of us at 15 yeah. watts. Some of us are like at 60. <laughs> <laughs> some, uh, uh, you know, some, are some of us are at any way bulb, depending on the circumstance. I mean, here's here's the reality of it. Sorry, there are some. I need to enunciate <laughs> may I may I have the class back, please? <laughs> no, I can't. Uh, uh, we are okay. Don't be surprised if they don't like you because you believe in Jesus. It's their right, for that matter. Be bold. Admit who you are. Be bold. Hey, we were talking about that at church on Sunday. Hey, you know, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a, I'm a Christian. Say it and then continue to be kind and friendly. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you have to be mad about it. Be happy about it. And that is good. That's good. Okay, then Kathy and then Rich and then Marco. Oh, I was getting that Jerry had nothing to do with what you were saying. Okay, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Today's lesson is a classic example. Okay. Jesus never abandons you. You abandon Jesus. Right. As long as you're faithful to him. Right. What, what, did, what did he do for Paul? Stay there. I will protect you. Yeah. And what if he felt that his grace is sufficient? Right. Do we believe that? His grace is sufficient. And consider the fiery trial that Paul went through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Marco. So, um, all that conversation reminded me of uh, John 15, uh, verse 18. Um, it kind of stuck with me when I first started my journey in Christ. So it says, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. Yeah. So that's my that's right. Simple as that, isn't it? Okay, so, so, <clears throat> so what can we take away from th this? We're going to face the brutal reality that some people are not going to li like us, specifically because we follow Jesus. And what's the command? If somebody doesn't like you because you follow Jesus, what does he say to do? He says to rejoice. He says to rejoice. And to look forward to that rejoicing that we're going to do in eternity. Isn't that what he just said? Didn't we just read that? Okay. So be bold. Be kind. And rejoice. I had a guy come after me once in the bathroom in the New, in, on the New Jersey Turnpike because he didn't like my button. He was, he, 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 he was like... Rah, rah. And I couldn't hear him. Sometimes I don't hear too well. There's a lot of background noise in there. And so I'm, I moved toward him and said, what did you say? Oh, no. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have fun with it. You got to have fun with it. I, wouldn't, I didn't intend to intimidate the guy. I'm, I don't even think of myself. I don't even realize I'm 6'5". Inside, I'm about 5'6". No way. You know? <laughs> And so I'm not, if I'm backing up, you know, you back away because I don't know I'm about to run over you. And I, I didn't even realize that, but it just, um, it's going to happen. And you might as well have fun with it. Yes. This is also a bit of a mind shift for the audience that Peter's writing to, because when he starts off by saying that they're the pilgrims of the dispersion, 
The only reason they were dispersed is because they were disobedient. And when you look at the law of Moses, if you're doing what God says, your crops are good, your births are good, your enemies are at peace with you, you're protected, everything's provided for, everything is good when you're obedient. Mm -hmm. As a Christian, when you are obedient, now you get suffering and reproach and death and glory. So it is a shift because it goes from obedience means nothing bad ever happens to obedience means many bad things will happen, but you receive glory afterwards. That's why it shouldn't be strange, but it would be very strange to them. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got to kind of go against our feelings sometimes or temptation to feel a certain way. Now. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. So when you're reproached, what's resting on you? Glory. Glory. God's glory is resting on you. Does it look like it? Did it look like it on the cross? No. By all human appearances, some crazy nutball was being dealt with. That's what it looked like if you were looking at it to human appearances, but that was glorious. Yes. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> that's what you said is true, except for the people that knew what they were doing, like the centurion who goes... He saw Nobody something, didn't he? Has ever died like this. Right. God's glory still came through that. Right. While they were while they were while they were ridiculing him and making fun of him. He saved others, he won't save himself, all this all this stuff. You know, that centurion, not a Jew, saw something. He saw he's, God's glory came came through there. When he came, who did he reveal himself? That night, when he came in Bethlehem, who were the first? Mary. Well, Mary, of course. <laughs> <laughs> shepherds, yeah, yeah, shepherds. That's what I was looking for. You're right, Mary and Joseph. They, yeah, they, they knew about that. But the shepherds, he revealed the shepherds. So, I mean... So the spirit, so for the spirit of glory and of God to rest upon you, it might not be seen by the in by our human eyes and by some human eyes, but you know what? It's going to break through somewhere, isn't it, Doug? On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. So they're blaspheming him, but we're glorifying him when we continue to be faithful in our walk with God, and we're not going to be perfect, but we can be faithful. Yes. I was just thinking I never um, knew how important the fellowship was and I'm, I'm starting, I don't think I, I know now and uh, when I'm at work dealing with stuff or in the world it can sometimes seem really hard but the second I get into this room or around you guys, I, the love that I get is, is so much better and different than even love that I got or I thought I was getting amongst old friends and um, that's that's just very Revealing to me. It's everything. Yeah. It's a revelation. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's important to come together. We get a rea you get a reality check. You know, you get a, 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 a true spiritual reality check. But let none of uh, uh, your parties glorified. So, so if you suffer as a Christian, hallelujah. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or a busybody in other people's manners. Matters. That's not to be rejoicing. I think it's really interesting because when you look at the first few that are there as quote big sins. Mm -hmm. Murderer, mm -hmm. thief, evildoer, busybody. Busybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the grumbling thing earlier. He does, he does that several places throughout. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, God, God does that several places 
when he's been gossiped with, you know, mm -hmm. thieves and murders, and here he's doing it again. It's like, um, a busybody in other people's matters. Mm -hmm. My parents taught me to fight my own battles. And sometimes we take up offenses for other people. And you're going to suffer for it. Sometimes you need to let them you need to let them fight their own battles because you don't know the whole truth. Plus your words can cause so much trouble. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to save the, I'm going to say, I'm going to fix this situation. I'm going to save it. Oh yeah. All they need is my beautiful words. <laughs> and here comes the piano. I'm speaking from some experience because I've tried to fix things that I shouldn't have fixed. Don't be a busybody. It won't help. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. So it's 1145. We'll stop right there. Verse 17. We'll pick up. <clears throat> Only two verses left. That's okay. Father in heaven, help us. We certainly need it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.